Welcome back to the Jen and Julian podcast. Your finger. Dink. Here we go. This episode is brought to you by The Skim. Guys, get yourself filled in on all the latest news in a very easy to read format with The Skim. Go to T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M dot com slash Jen and Julian and it's free. Just click subscribe, enter your email, you're good. HoneyBook, um, guys, if you're a freelancer or a photographer or if you're a small business owner and you don't know how to deal with all the business side of things and you're like, man, this is all really stupid. I just wanted to pursue my hobby. HoneyBook's for you. They take care of uh, all sorts of uh, what? what business. They're standing here. They want oh, they want up. Okay. Uh, they take care of all sorts of your business uh, dealings when you have, when you may not be equipped for all of that, go to honeybook, H-O-N-E-Y-B-O-O-K.com, promo code Jenna Julian. Check it out. You can get 50% off your first year. Um, and it applies whether you're doing annual or monthly payments. And also, guys, a new sponsor this week, I believe, a new sponsor, Calm. If you're struggling to sleep, Calm is the number one app for sleep. So check it out. Uh, you guys get 20% off Calm premium subscription at calm, C-A-L-M dot com slash Jenna Julian. Seize the day. So if you want to seize the day, sleep the night, go to calm.com slash and uh, click the link down below. Check it out. Um, it's actually a cool app. Thank you, sponsor. Sleep is very, very important. Yeah. I Mar- could use some. I I could be using Calm more. I could be using Calm Marbles, more on the other hand, does not need Calm ever. <laughs> These guys sleep so much. I was thinking about it the other day. Because when we're like, we walk them, we hang out with them, we do our thing. But when we're like doing, whether it's work or we're hanging out, watching TV, gaming. They're sleeping. They're sleeping. And then ah. they go from hours and hours of that. All right, well, time to go to bed. And then they sleep. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like, they sleep what? so many hours. So many hours. The thing is, though, too, is that like the door's always open. They can always go outside and Those play, open, run around. Right? Like they always have an option to do something. And they always Do we just have lazy dogs? Choose to sleep. Is that how dogs are, like, everywhere? What are you doing? She really does not want to sit in her bed. Why? It's a very comfortable, big, furry bed that we spent probably too much money on and also burned the side of. I didn't burn the side of We, together as a unit, burned the side of that Mm -hmm. bed. There was an alleged fireplace in our last house. The, The distance between the bed and the fireplace, no one ever saw it. We actually, it's unconfirmed, the distance. And now a side of it is yellow and it was brown before. We actually should have someone check that out. Do you think that's safe? What are you talking about? Is there a chemical reaction? Because I know it wasn't, I know it wasn't the fire because it couldn't have been. I was. Oh, you're so much. Did you bleach the hair of that? Yeah, I bleached it. You bleached the hair of that bed? Because it has like long hair. You know, I love just like. Did you take that to ratchet? Bleach and dark fabrics. It looks good. I mean, it looks sort of like frosted tips of the bed. Can we show them? Can you? Is anyone in it? I feel like we should show them. I'm no. Hey, babe, could you grab that bed real quick? No, no. <laughs> okay, I'll describe it. Do you not want? It's you a want furry the dogs- brown bed. Okay, with the hair that's like about this long. It's like almost like a shag carpet, but it's like, you know, furry and brown. Looks kind of like a bear's laying down there, and then on the top of it, it's gold. Thank you. You're welcome. How was is, how is that storytelling? It was really good, Julian. Okay. okay. I was going to wear my um, computer glasses on the podcast, but I realized that when I put these on, you, all you see is the light. Yeah, my glasses do that too. Because I have the, the computer glasses thing for these. So, I know. Sorry, y'all. We have reflections in our glasses. I'm wearing my podcast glasses. <laughs> nice. Podcast glasses. Plasses. Honestly, podcast glasses, okay? It's an glasses. invention. You put them on, it and then all of a sudden, you're qualified. To- <laughs> she jumped all the way up to the table. How did you do that? That was very high. I'm telling you, she really wants to sit with you. Just she, sit you're with just her giving for a the podcast full ass right now. <laughs> like, full ass. We're, this goes on YouTube and iTunes and Spotify. Click the links below. Just you sit with her. Let her sit with you. Okay. I'm letting her do whatever she wants. This is what she wants. Father's Day. She wants okay, to spend time with her daddy. Okay, okay five-year-old. Meanwhile, Kermit left. I don't know where he went. He's probably eating something downstairs. Bunny's not here either. 
They uh, didn't want to join us. Say, hey, Kermit. Uh-oh. Did we lock him outside? No. Wasn't there a podcast where we realized Peach was outside? Like mid-podcast? Probably. Probably years ago in the old house. Happy birthday. Remember that? Yeah. She's five now. She's five. I was just about to say something. Cool. What was I about to say? I don't know. Before Pete jumped up, I was saying something. Podcast glasses. Oh, podcast glasses. Great idea. So um, you put them on and then you're qualified to talk about any subject on a podcast. (laughs) All you need is the podcast glasses and then you're good. You have all the uh, degrees and qualifications with the glasses. I thought you were going to say that when you put them on, it blasts. Your mileage may vary. It, when you put them on, it blasts a podcast at other people. <laughs> like the audio of it? There's yeah. just speakers? Like, where are the speakers? Are they built into the rims? Yeah. It's just someone shouting at you. It's just one podcast. Mm-hmm. And it's a very aggressive one. Yeah. Those are... We have two versions of podcast glasses. Let us know which one you want. My version is $8,000, but it comes with all the credentials you need. All right, Julian. What are we doing today? I'm... I thought we were go- talking about great ideas, but I guess we'll move on to a Q and A. We have a Q and A. We're doing a Q and A. Marissa did it for us. Our wonderful Twitch mod, Marissa, took the time to. Actually, she helped us because she helps run the Instagram. So you guys sent in questions to our Instagram, uh, and we have what? What do you have? A tw- twenty. So we have twenty questions for both of us. Then we have five for each of us. Yeah. And I've looked over most of these, Mm -hmm. uh, but some of them I haven't looked over. Should we just get right into it? Yeah. Okay. Number one, how long did it take you to pick a major in college? Do you know what you wanted to do? Did you know what you wanted to do at the time? No. When I I was a freshman, uh, my advisor and my mom and anyone that was like helping me make decisions, I was undecided or... uh, I didn't like apply to a certain school for a certain program or anything like that. I just went to the school that I wanted to go to because it was in Boston. And that was the criteria for me picking the college. But I certainly did not know what I wanted to study. So my freshman year, I took one class in uh, communications Uh and one class in psychology, which is sort of the two that I was back and forth between. And I decided that I hated my communications class. What was communications like? Like, what did you do? What it, are the well, classes? The, the class that I took was called mass communications, okay. which, to be honest, I got an A in the class, but, like, I really just didn't want to be there. Yeah. I didn't – the subject was not interesting to me. Like, most of those people were, you know, PR majors and, you know, all the media stuff. Like, I don't know. There, there was a small, like, film – area of the school that I went to, but Uh like none of it was interesting to me. It was just like media. For sure. Not new media because that wasn't a thing. Same. Yeah. And, um, it just genuinely bored me. And so like communications is sort of like the bridging of media and like PR. Right. So it's like, is that like, what is, I actually don't even know the answer to what communications is technically referring to. In the well, major neither sense. do I. And I took a whole class in it. No idea. Couldn't fucking tell communications. you. Communications. Like if you're a comm major, you you know how to communicate well? No. It's more like magazines, newspapers, television. So media. Yeah. You just call it media. Well, it was called communications. I'll talk to him. Okay. So you were you were going to be communications and you swi- you decided... I didn't switch. Or you... You were thinking about both ways. So you took a class in communications. Yeah. And then you decided psychology. Yeah. I took a psych class and I took communi- uh, one communications class okay. that I could get in. Got it. To my schedule. Yeah. And I hated that class. And everyone in it was pretty obnoxious. Fair enough. Although to be fair, for like in the nicest way possible, yeah. psych 101 classes can also be very obnoxious because some people use it as a when they start learning about things, they're like, I know about this because it happened to me. And you're like, okay, you know, I really respect you and everything yeah, that you've sure. been through, my friend, but this, not how this, works. this is a, this is an educational classroom. I'm just trying to learn the basics here. You know, that was a very lengthy story you told about your brother. But, you know, we only have 45 minutes here and we have a lot of material to cover, but I respect you and care about you. 
It's like studying kinesiology and being like, no, I broke my leg. I know, I, I'm not going to study this part. I, I know, know all of this. I know how this feels and looks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I really, that's how I picked. So by nice. sophomore year, I decided that I was a psych major. Uh, for me, I went in, uh, I was going to be a business major. Um, cause I was like really more focused on baseball. And then when baseball stopped being in my life, I was like, I hate this. <laughs> I hate business. I didn't want to be in any of the classes I was in. I wasn't enjoying it. There was no like, there was no bit of me that was like grabbed by the material. Yeah. I was just kind of showing up. Then I, um, I th- I'm pretty sure the paper was first. Then I decided to write for the school paper. I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, maybe I should do writing. But then I was like, I don't think writing's my thing. I like writing, but I don't think that's what I want the entirety of my college, you know, experience to be around, based around. So I, I was writing for the school paper. I was doing sports game, like I was writing for the sports section. And then I decided, let's try, uh, I think it was actually one of my GE classes was um, like a broadcast journalism class, like an intro to something. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. You know, you get to work with cameras, learn about lighting, audio, some programs, um, and the news. And I was like, Okay, that's what I'll do. So I decided to be television broadcast journalism um, with somewhat – it wasn't technically a minor, but it was like somewhat of a minor in journalism, like written journalism because I took a lot of classes on that uh, and spent like two and a half years in the paper, writing for the paper. So that was it. Yeah. yeah, I just kind of found a class and I was like, this is more interesting than what my major is, so I'm going to switch. Yeah, and I I think that the gist of the question is like – you know, how long did it take you to figure out what you wanted to study and yeah. like, how did you get there? And from my experience and, you know, from knowing a lot of people in college, it's sort of like, it's totally fine to be undecided and it's totally fine to switch. But I think the best way to, to get to where you want to go is to just take a class or two, an elective or anything you can sort of squeeze in and figure out what class is really interesting to you. Yeah. And I know that school isn't for everyone. So like if nothing's interesting to you, that that's totally fine too. But like for me, it was, I'm good at math and science and like not, I knew that I wasn't going to get a bachelor of arts, you know, I knew I was going to get a bachelor of science yeah, because that's just what I'm good at and something that goes into you, my brain. You, you wasn't a BA boy. No, I was not a BA. I'm a BA boy. I'm a BS girl. <laughs> <laughs> What's that smell? <laughs> It's a bachelor of science. <laughs> nice. But, um, yeah, it's just taking a class or yeah. two and, and figuring out something that's interesting to you. Because, you know, once I – you have some exposure, obviously, to some of the stuff you can study in college or else, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You've surprised you're in college or like yeah. <laughs> you have some exposure, but taking a class and really going into it and being like, oh, this is really interesting. And I could take a, there's so much more I'd love to learn about this. And it's a cool feeling. Cause I think when I, that first happened to me, I wasn't expecting to ever feel that way about a class. Yeah. Well, if like, you're in class. business and you're like, this isn't terribly interesting, it feels like, well, none of this is terribly interesting. Yeah. What am I doing? I just yeah. want to play baseball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is fine too. Um, totally. Second mm. question is, do you regret getting a degree since you don't use it for your current job? No, 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 never, never. I think never, you guys never. know the answer. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about that plenty ever. Yeah. It, it's one of the most important experiences socially whole, like the whole thing, emo- emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually that I have gone through. So I don't, I don't regret one second of that. Yeah. And like the second part of this question is even though you don't use it for a current job and I feel like that comes up a lot. Like, do you use your degree for your job? And that comes up for probably a lot of people who work in new media because there's not a lot of like, I mean, now they're starting to pop up, but like Mm -hmm. degrees in new media or whatever, you're kind of studying the old media then you get into the real world and it's not that. Um, But I I would argue that my degree helped me more in life than my job, just like in life, just the experience of going to college made me in outside of work, just a human in society, a better, more equipped person. Yeah. I think we're millennials in that, you know, our, our parents were like, go to college. This is a way for you to get a, you know, career, an entry level job yeah. and be competitive in the, in the workforce that you can have a, that path to life, you know? Uh-huh. And for our parents, it was like, not as expensive you know, still the same time commitment. And then after they were done, they were guaranteed a well-paying job 
as opposed to if they had not gone to college. Whereas millennials spend way more money on college, are guaranteed absolutely nothing. fucking Zero. nothing yeah. when they get out. And then <laughs> a lot of them end up changing fields mm -hmm. or figuring out something else where they can make money or do anything. And I, I think that we're true millennials and that we both got degrees in something that we are not currently, in theory, working in our field, you know, mm -hmm. but that that experience to invest that time into your education and how to be an adult and yeah. all of that, you know, you use those skills every day. Every I would day. I would be horribly ill equip equipped to do my current job if I didn't have those experiences or, you know, just general time management for decades of my life. Time management and discipline. Like <laughs> anyone can look at you and be like, you've been doing this for so long and you're still very successful at everything that you do. And I wonder where that came from. Oh, you finished uh, graduate school in like a year or like two years. Yeah, I mean, that's not why. I mean, but it's no, but it like makes sense. You think yeah. about that and you're like, okay, the discipline to do A kind of makes more sense to how you have the discipline to do B, which is yeah. your career. And it's just me speaking personally. It's not. Totally. It's, it's anecdotal. Not I'm what just, you should yeah. do or what anyone no, should absolutely. do. That's just my experience dude, for but me. That's, that's what the podcast is. It's all about us, dude. All about only our experiences. Oh Sorry. All right. What else you got? Suggestions for eating vegan at restaurants. Oh, okay. First depends where you are. Second depends how hungry are you. Good preface. Okay. Then <laughs> do you like potatoes? <laughs> uh, yeah. I would say potatoes are your best friend. Beans, rice, be careful because a lot of them are, especially at Mexican restaurants, they're uh, seasoned or soaked chicken in stock. chicken stock. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's it's sometimes it sucks. Sometimes just understand that you're probably not going to get like what like food, or like you're not going to satiate <laughs> yourself. You're just going to like be a good sport and not draw attention to yourself, and you know get through it. Some days you you might have a plate full of sides, and mm -hmm. you know it's going to be okay. I went to Spago for a meeting, wore a t-shirt and a hat, got made fun of for it, but I probably deserved it because it's a very fancy restaurant. I didn't know that. I know. I was like, I got to go to a lunch meeting. Okay, time to wear lunch stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that's not the point. The point is uh, they only have like meat and seafood. So I ordered a side of peppers and a side of mushrooms and that was my lunch. That's sometimes what it's going to be. <laughs> that's my advice. Sometimes it's going to be peppers and mushrooms. Or pasta or something like that. But usually if, if, you, if there's something on the menu that you feel like you could ask, you know, a salad or a pasta dish or something, if, well, for you, it's harder because it's gluten-free. But if you're like, could I possibly do this with no egg and yeah. no, none of this stuff sure. on top? I don't, I'm, I'm vegan. I don't eat animal products. Is there, or if, you know, if you're at a nicer restaurant and you're like, is, can this fucking chef make me anything possibly? Yeah. Or our default is usually like, can I just get a big plate of fries? Yeah. I mean, ideally, you'll have you'll be at a restaurant where they're willing to work with you. I right. mean, a lot of restaurants nowadays are, are mindful of dietary restrictions. Totally. So use that, you know. But yeah, sometimes it's just going to be. Sometimes it's just being that person that's like, "Can I please have this with no X, Y, and Z?" Yeah, and then when the, then the whole entire conversation becomes about you and your diet, and you know, it's fine. Just <laughs> when they start talking about they want to talk about your diet, just talk <laughs> about how your farts are, and then they'll be like, "Okay, let's talk about something else." Okay, what? What? If they want to bring, dude. If your diet becomes the topic of conversation and you're like, I don't want this to be the topic of conversation, you're like, how long have you been vegan? Um, like a year, but when I first started, my farts were crazy. Julian, but now they're kind of died down. Ah. Exactly. And then they're going to be like, let's talk about sports. How and is that helpful advice? All I'm saying is <laughs> if you don't want the conversation to be about you, then steer them away. Just get behind the wheel, make a couple right turns and steer them away. Steer them away. Way. That is terrible advice. Do you shop vegan for other products, i.e., household stuff, makeup, etc.? I really try. Yeah. I mean, I try my skincare and like a lot of my makeup at this point is like vegan and cruelty free because they there are so many options and it's just not quite the same space that it was like 10 years ago. Uh -huh. I feel like you can get really cool, fun products that are vegan and cruelty free. And if that exists for me to get, I would love to purchase that over something that's not. Yeah. And um, I would say that I try my my best, but that this, I don't know, this might be controversial, but like 
there's some hypocrisy sometimes in veganism. Like we don't eat animal products, but we feed our dogs animal every day, you know? And for me personally, I try 100% of the time to not consume animal products. You don't try, you do. Do, yeah. yeah. And like everything else, I try my very best while knowing that sometimes like... You have to make it, a compromise. It might be unavoidable. If well, we have dogs, it's different. We can't have dogs if we're not willing to feed them their diet. You know? I think I think that's that's the kind of point here. It's like we're if we're if we're taking it to the next level, I think it's too far because then you're endangering or putting someone else at risk. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're not willing to feed an animal their diet, then you their know. like actual diet, like what they're actually supposed to eat. Yeah, and well, there's someone that I really like on YouTube, the Unnatural Vegan, who's She's great. so like. Ridiculous. She, she shouted us out recently. Yeah, yeah, she's ridiculously practical and logical, and she talks about a lot of stuff like that, you know, that it's in a perfect world, yes, we wouldn't use animal products for anything or animals for anything. Sometimes it's just like, we live in a house. We, I'm sure a lot of habitats for anim animals were... We're here before. Yes. And we you know, ended those habitats. <laughs> can you really, like, exactly. you know... Yeah. I don't know. There's just a lot of stuff. I try my very best is the answer. But uh, for me, my main focus is not consuming any animal products. Mm -hmm. And for the rest of it is like, am I going to scream and cry and freak the fuck out about everything in the world? I try my best because I feel like I would just get way, I would lose my mind and just live off grid in a jungle somewhere because everything is a lot. But yeah. I try my very best, especially with makeup, beauty products, that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. I'm, the, I'm, I'm the same. I mean, we, like when it comes to shoes and materials and things like that. Right. I mean, I'm very, very, very mindful, trying to, my best to never purchase something that you know has been used, uh, has taken animal products to make or whatever. But yeah, again, it's like you have to be practical. You have to um, think of like other things besides just like being by the book and being very strict, like. In this case, it would be like our dogs or our quality of life. Like, where do you live if you actually want to be a one in million a tree. percent vegan? Exactly. You live in the forest, like a caveman. No, he lives in a cave. <laughs> That's, yeah, good answer though. Uh, if you could live anywhere other than LA, where would it be? Well, considering we're going 100% vegan, I'm going to go live in a tree somewhere. <laughs> no, stop. Um, I would still probably say Austin. Austin? Yeah. Realistically, I think I would too. Yeah. It's been my, like, I'll see you when I see you place, you know? Mm, I agree. Yeah. Maybe Montana, but that's a very different life. Oh, I love Montana. Very different life. But I would, maybe we'll try visiting first. Okay. And then we'll move. Sounds good. Okay, I'll pack the stuff. All right, cool. <laughs> I'll pack the stuff, like our whole lives. Put it in the car. It's not going to fit. Might. Okay. I got a shrink machine. <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh... This question says, is now a good time for a seg? Yeah, it actually is. And right now, guys, if you're getting ready to go to bed or you're struggling to sleep and you need to wake up fresh and energized for something the that? next day. That was actually on there. Yeah, someone actually, <laughs> I think Marissa probably did Marissa. that. Uh, guys, Calm is a great app if you struggle with sleep. Okay, one in three people don't get enough sleep and lack of sleep can negatively, negatively affect your ability to learn, solve problems, make decisions, and overall thrive as a human being. Trust me, I know. I've deprived myself of sleep many, many nights, and I've felt all of the repercussions, and it's not fun. So don't. Go uh, in the App Store, download Calm, or go to calm, C-A-L-M dot com slash Jenna Julian. You get 25% off Calm Premium, which is their premium subscription. Uh, and they give you tools like soundscapes and uh, uh, like a bunch of sleep stories, things that help you kind of drift off. You know, it brings you into the sleepy, dreamy world. And they do it in a really nice, effective way. Um, narrated oftentimes by people with soothing voices like Jerome Flynn from Game of Thrones. Um, things like that. Just things that you wouldn't exactly think of, but it's worth giving a shot if you struggle with falling asleep. So check it out. Go to Calm or hit the link down below and get some sleep. Also, guys, the skim is a, an incredible tool to educate yourself on the world's current events and the things that are going on that you might not get all the facts from other sources like social media. The skim is a newsletter. You enter your email, cl uh, click subscribe. It's T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M dot com slash Jenna Julian. You just go there and enter your email. It's easy. Um, it's a really great service. I mean, it's a very beautifully compact and easy to read newsletter in the morning. 
that you get every day and coffee in the skim. So check it out. And right now you enter for a $250 Visa gift card. Um, it's completely free. There's nothing required of you. So just enter your email, click subscribe, check it out. See how you like it. Also guys, HoneyBook, if you're a freelancer, a uh, photographer, graphic designer, just have a small business, you need help with invoices and documents and brochures and calendar management and e-signatures, all that stuff that you're like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how I was ever supposed to learn how to do that. I, I'm an artist. <laughs> That's very business. HoneyBook is there to help you. Their payment is flexible. Use the Jenna Julian code. You get 50% off monthly or annually. That's $20 a month or $200 for a whole year of organization. Um, over 75,000 uh, photographers, designers, event professionals, and just solo entrepreneurs of all other kinds have used HoneyBook. And right now you can check it out. It is a really great tool if you're struggling with the business side of things, which I think a lot is a very common problem for people who start their own yeah. situation. They're like, okay, now I need to hit this person with an invoice. I don't know how to even do that. Because I did, I did that and it mm -hmm. was really hard. The process was really shitty. I wish I had a HoneyBook at the time. So hit the link down below or um, check it out. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you for letting me talk about sponsors, guys. I appreciate you. What um, else you got in there? I updated to the new iOS, so the photos is very different. Okay, here we go. Yum and fun. What's the biggest obstacle Bunny has overcome thus far? I'd still say the stairs. Yeah. She, she came all the way up. Yep. She started coming all the way up because... I know in your video that you posted. Uh, For her birthday? Yeah. She was going down the stairs. She still goes all the way down the stairs without a problem. Every morning she comes out of her crate and goes downstairs. But only recently we literally tried. She would go. She would stall at the bottom of the stairs. Then she would go up the first half and then stand on the landing. And then that's when we would have to do her pause or carry her, depending how exhausted you are. <laughs> and it was like an intimidation thing. She didn't like... The second, because going up, that means you're upstairs now. Mm -hmm. The first half of the stairs is easy. Yeah. So we tried to just go, get it, make it a big deal. So they were going, to, we're going to bed, we're going upstairs. And everybody, come, obviously these guys get all very excited. Yeah. And just see what she does. Yeah. And she came, you know, about 15 minutes later. We're just up there. Came all, just walking in the room. And I was like, oh my God, you did it. Yeah, one thing Jenna had a good idea for, which has helped a lot, is at night, once she's upstairs, like not letting her in her crate for like 10 minutes, letting her just explore the room so she can really familiarize herself and feel comfortable with her space outside of her crate. Um, that definitely helped for the mornings. That made it so in the morning, she's totally fine coming out right, um, out of her crate and downstairs. But yeah. she used to sort of sit in there and bark and like be a little nervous to come out when we you're trying to figure out what that was. Yeah. And I think that it's just... She's never spent time up there. She never spends time upstairs unless she's in here, which yeah. is not even right now. Yeah, she's downstairs. Right? Because we were doing the thing. We were like, okay, we're going upstairs. We're going upstairs. If you want to come with us, you can. And she doesn't have to. Whereas before on the podcast, we would help her up the stairs. Yeah, I think there was one podcast where she just kind of followed us. And we were like, wow, that was amazing. But then the last couple, we had been having to help her. Because it's daytime. She's like, why would I go upstairs in the daytime? It's hard, though. I mean, she's progressed in a lot of areas and then regressed in a lot of areas. Like, yeah. we're still we're still dealing with resource guarding. Yeah. Even though, you know, for like a month, she was like, I'm done with this, fam. And then she's like, just kidding. I'm not. Get away from me. Growl, snap, snarl whenever she has a toy or is yeah. there a toy. So, I mean, there's still stuff that we're working on and she's doing really good in some places. But I would say her coming all the way up the stairs by herself is just really cool. Yeah. For sure. I would agree. Uh, what is the past tense of ye yoat or yeeted? Definitely yeeted. I'd say yeeted. <laughs> Although yoat is pretty dope. Yoat's funny, but it's definitely yeeted. Why are you coughing on me? He just yeeted a cough on you. What's, yeeted. What's the most rebellious thing you did as a teen and got caught for? Fucking sneaking out. Or like I was with my friend and a couple of boys. First of all, that she liked snuck out and came over to her house when we were having a sleepover and then her parents found out and then my parents found out. Oh shit. You had a whole fucking scheme. Yeah. I mean, I was sort of like the, I did passive bad shit. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't the you one. the ringleader. I was never the ringleader. Yeah, I was the never the one that was like, guys, let's do this bad thing. Yeah. I was always like, <laughs> okay, okay, I won't tell anyone. Oh, tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, I ran away one time. <laughs> 
actually and why? I ran away from home. Oh, no. I felt so annoyed at my mom and brother. I, I remember, I, think I felt like they were teaming up on me. And I was like, I hate this. I'm running away. Oh, no. So I ran away. I went right to my friend Andrew's house. I literally, I think I walked there. And it wasn't close. I probably spent like 35, 40 minutes walking. Um, then when I got there, I, well, I mean, I, I think I had, might have been texting him. I think I was texting him and I was like, hey, you I'm had a over. phone? Yeah. I think it was like freshman Damn. year in high school. No one's ever going to be able to find you at your best friend's house who you've been texting for the last half hour. So I show up and <laughs> as soon as I get there, his mom's like, you can't stay here. Aww. I got to talk to your mom. So, but I stayed there for a little bit and hung out and then I went back home and I was like, see, that's what happens now. I'm gone. I'm bitches. gone. You team up on me, I'm out. I'm going to Andrews. <laughs> I'm going to play video games. I'm going to play Madden. That, that reminded me that I wasn't a teen, but me and my like childhood best friend, we used to love to do everything together. Mm-hmm. And one of our favorite games to play was let's intentionally get lost in the store with either oh of our God. moms. <laughs> what the heck yeah dude it was bad i remember her what mom would be like what is wrong with you girls and we're like hiding in a rack of clothes like <laughs> under it she's like dude she can't find us man dude she's fucking worried look at her she's freaking out and then you hear your name over the loudspeaker they're like will jenna please report to the customer service desk your mother is looking for you and i'm like oh shit game's over yeah it's always game over when they go to the the announcer in the store and we did that a couple times <laughs> And then it was parents like, be like, where are they? Why do kids do this? And kids be like, this is an activity. <laughs> <laughs> I know now as an adult, I'm like, how terrifying. Ugh. Like, what a mean, awful th- that. And I, like, that's we only did it a couple times. Based at all. Like, that's just not good. Well, because you've been a child and you've lost your mom in a store before and you're yeah. like sobbing and yeah, it's screaming horrifying. and it's crying. Like, but like as an adult, I think I'm dying. <laughs> you can't just like stand there and sob and scream and cry and be like, I can't find my child. No, I mean, you panic. can. It's but panic like, and figure it out. <laughs> that's basically the emotions I would put my mother and her mother through. Because it was fun. Yeah, but we didn't do it a lot. I just you know? remember a couple of times being like, that's we're pretty, doing it. It's pretty funny. We lost. We lost. We did it. Oh, no one knows who we are. Even our parents. We're in so much fucking trouble. <laughs> Whose mom's going to cry first? Yours or mine? <laughs> um, what was your nickname growing up? Hi, bunny. Hi, bunny. Did she come up? I think so. Hi, bunny. I just heard her on the stairs. I would be very impressed. I know. Bunny girl. My parents used to call me Butternut. Oh, okay. That's cute. Butternut. Although my mom also I took... I was too young to remember... But my mom would call me BJ for baby Jenna. But I'm like, glad nobody called me BJ. <laughs> baby Jenna, yeah. BJ. Yeah. That's really cute. Yeah. I'll call you BJ from now on. She would call my brother Biff. <laughs> your mom called your brother Biff? Yeah. And I love she you, says Debbie. things like, That's such a funny nickname. She'd be driving. She'd go, I'm just going to bip into the store over there. <laughs> I'm just going to bip it. She just comes up with, ver- comes up with verbs, yeah. makes them up. Um, Julie Bop. Was what my dad and grandpa called me. Julie. My grandpa called me Julie a lot. Uh-huh. Julie boy. Uh, my dad called me Julie Bop. And then my friends, you ready for this? Call me Soli. <laughs> that was... <laughs> shut up. I said shut up. This, that was my Xbox gamer tag. And oh, I'm my, aware. And my name. Hell yeah. Soli. Soli with three E's. It's actually technically still one of my emails right mm-hmm. now. And none of y'all gonna fucking guess it. But it's Soli something. Three E's, always. That was it. Um, do you sleep with the top sheet? Yes, but Julian always kicks it off. This was like, I would say like three or four years ago, I sat you down and I was like, stop doing that to the flat sheet. Stop it or I'm not going to sleep next to you. Listen to me, boy. Okay, this is an important part of the bed. You can't just like kick it off and not have it. Don't and, look at me like that. And then I'd be like, I'm going to try really hard to learn how to act while I'm asleep. Okay, got it. <laughs> no, he used to kick it off and it would just be like in a crumple at the bottom. I'm in like a neat sleeper. Like I love when the bed's made. Like if I make a bed and then I alone sleep in it, I can just sort of like 
when I wake up in the morning, just move the blanket and then it's already made again. Like I don't <laughs> I sleep to, like, like this fucking wild. Take everything wild... off the bed and put it back on. Yeah, exactly. It's usually kicked off at the bottom of our bed somewhere. Learning <gasps> to sleep. <laughs> what the? Did you just pull that hair out of his mouth? Yeah, I just pulled a whole hair. I thought it was on my leg. Like I was just going to move it. It was in his mouth? It was in his mouth. And he just looked at me and was like. Oh. You are nasty. God, he never ceases to amaze me with his nastiness. <sighs> Sorry. Jesus. Anyways, that didn't happen. Um, the learning curve of sleeping with another person regularly as an adult was difficult for me. <laughs> but I've got I've come very far, I think. <laughs> you have. Um, you seem to only film or document like your cheat meals. What do you eat on a normal day? It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, a normal. I know there's like I like watching videos. What of I eat in a day? People like eating normal food, yeah. you know. But I think for you, it was sort of like I would just want to make something exciting. I wouldn't usually make. Yeah. But I'd say for a typical day, I mean, when we're not ordering takeout and being naughty, yeah. it's like a smoothie for breakfast, a salad for lunch, and then we'll make something for dinner. Um, We've shared a lot of our dinner recipes on stream, like the shepherd's pie, the pastas we do, enchilada, enchilada, the chili, the oh, pad thai. So good. We can honestly, we kind of have like six recipes, and then we just rotate through them. Yeah, um, or like sometimes seasonally too. It's like we'll make a a nice kale Caesar salad with some actual corn, and then Julian won't eat the corn. I'll eat Julian's corn because he'll be like, "All right, fine, we can have corn," and then I'll eat the corn. corn I don't on, want to talk. Corn about on the corn bone. Corn on the corn bone. Corn. But instead of the corn bone, it's a hot dog. <laughs> Shout out, Shouts Jason. Out to Jason. Um, Although I don't, I'm not like a big breakfast eater, but like I do really like two pieces of toast with chilies on it, like chili uh, beans. Yeah, chili toast. So I, you take like kidney beans or whatever beans you like with a little crushed tomato and do chili seasoning and you just let that cook down and you put that on toast. Love I might it. make a video what I eat in a day with like vegan in the title and then just eat like jello every meal. Oh my God. Why would you do that? I don't know. I don't <laughs> think I've ever seen a what I eat in a day that's just jello for every meal. Is it vegan jello? Who knows? It's for every meal. What the hell, Julian? Yeah, it's got to be vegan jello. Maybe just cotton candy instead. Okay. What's your favorite part about <laughs> what I eat in a day? <laughs> You're just eating cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think jello would be funny. You don't even use any utensils. You just. You just slurp it up, cut to breakfast, lunch. Ew. Sometimes sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night and I need a snack, I go really light, um, go down in the fridge, slurp it. That's a shit post, Julian. Yeah. You know, my city. What's your favorite part about being an influencer? Does it ever hit you, the amount of impact you have over people? I don't, I don't know. Yes, I think. I don't. I'd say my favorite part is like just when you go somewhere and someone's like, Tell you dogs I said what's up. Yeah. Like, people are just nice. Really nice. That's my favorite part. Yeah. Um I I don't know. I try not to think about yeah. the rest of it. Yeah. Because it gets a little overwhelming. It does. Um one of my favorite things uh has been like in Twitch, I'm hanging out live and there's a chat room full of people saying things, having conversations with me. And making everyone laugh. And making everyone laugh, but also just like, you know. I'm having com- I'm having really cool conversations with people who are very nice and pleasant and smart and funny that I normally wouldn't have been able to have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If I wasn't an influencer, I didn't have people watching me, I wouldn't have that opportunity to hang out with so many cool people. That's pretty cool. Like just by going live. Yeah. That's such a cool thing. Like oftentimes I'll find myself and be like, oh, this is a really fun conversation we're having or like something cool we're talking about. I'm like, damn, this is cool. You know, I get to talk to you guys. I agree. It's just a conversation. Um... Mm, what's the best gift you've ever received? Not from each other. Huh. Best gift you've ever received. When I was a kid, I got a Lion King electric toothbrush. Wow. That I wanted so bad. And I feel like I waited an eternity for Christmas to come. Mm. And I put it on my Christmas list because I still believed in Santa. Mm-hmm. And I actually got it. Wow. I was really excited. I love that toothbrush. Mm-hmm. You still have it? No. <laughs> That's it's sad. It's kind of gross to have like a 30-year-old toothbrush, don't you think? Is it gross or is... Well, yeah, it's probably gross. <laughs> 30-year-old toothbrush. <laughs> More like it 20. It wouldn't be functional. It'd be a relic. Yeah. 
I don't I don't know. I'm trying to think of like one gift that I got as a kid or younger or whatever that was like a huge I mean I got a lot like my parents were so good to me. You know, it's hard to just like we don't have to play little league. Like I got the gear that I wanted, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I they hooked me up and I would say the best gift I ever got was from something I bought for myself. Um in high school when I is it that stupid catcher's helmet? Why is it? Why would you call it stupid? It's like <laughs> what, top five, one of my most fa- most. Pos- I'm sorry. Pr- proudly prized possession in my life. You're right. I shouldn't have called it stupid. I'm sorry. It's a. Really it is the catcher's mask. <laughs> it was when I went on eBay and found it. It's a, it's a good present. To, think to yourself. Yeah, I don't know. I I, mean, I feel like I'm doing. My parents dirty because I can't like think of an epic gift that I'm sure they got me. Sorry, parents. I don't think they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the whoa? Ready? Are we doing it? At the same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, delete that from the internet. I hate all of y'all. Cut. I hate all of y'all. Cut. The Jenna Julian podcast now on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> if the dogs were humans, what kind of jobs would they have? Um, I don't think Kermit could have a job. <laughs> He's too unstable. <laughs> he would not be able to hold a job. No. Marbles- he would constantly lash out at his coworkers. He would show up late. He would steal other people's food. <laughs> he wouldn't be hygienic at all. <laughs> Kermit or Marble would be a cop. <laughs> he is definitely an old, smug angry cop. We call him the fun police all the time. Yeah, he's just like, oh, these fucking kids doing it and again. He's- just Arresting kids. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel. I feel like Peach would just work in retail or something. Where she she would, can so meet she'd be people. like a hostess. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Can I get you a table? How many people are there? <laughs> yeah, she'd be like a really sprite waitress or a host or something. And then she would go in the back all the time and just eat food. And then meet people and then eat food. And <laughs> then meet people, people and, and then food. eat food. She loves people and food. And her boss, luckily enough, adores her and doesn't make her take any of that food out of her own paycheck. You know, she doesn't, she gets to eat on the house. I'll go get you some waters and eat some french fries. <laughs> and then come back and then meet you. <laughs> she really loves meeting people. She loves, yeah. What about what, Bunny? like the UPS guy. She just, or who was it? The, the postman or whatever. Yeah, she was just like all over him last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bunny? Bunny just wants to play for a living. Bunny would be like a kindergarten teacher. She likes dogs. She likes people, but she mostly wants to have fun. Yeah, that's so. true. Or she'd be like a clown that goes to kids' birthday parties. <laughs> 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 what? So Kermit's unemployed. <laughs> Marbles is a cop. Peach is a hostess at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And Bunny is a clown that goes to children's parties. <laughs> Yeah, that's about it. I hope that answers your question. Okay. All right. Now let's go to individual questions. Okay. You ready? Jana, what is it like to move and settle into a completely different city and state? How did you get accustomed? Mm, it like, there's always, I would say a year. I said a year. To get. Yeah. When I moved from Rochester to Boston, I was like, you know, I'm going for college, but like, After that, even when I was done with school and that really, it really felt like my home. But I was like, if I go somewhere and I hate it, Uh I can always move back, you know? And same with when I moved to Los Angeles, it was like, I would say a year or so to where I started feeling like, you know, I found my little spots. I found some friends or people that I want to hang out with. Yeah. But that first year is really hard and it's easy to be like, I hate it here. Everything sucks. I feel lost. I don't know anyone. It's really hard to meet people. Like it's easy to tap out in that space Mm -hmm. and be like, this isn't for me. Yeah. But I always at least try and push myself to make it past that year mark. And if it doesn't feel like a fun place to be, then I would leave. And for the most part, I mean, it seems like I've made decisions that have made me happy. You make good decisions. Well, you know that I toil over them for a very long time yes, I do. before I make them. So. Yes, I do. Ordering dinner every night is pure hell. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, what games are you most excited to play? Uh, highlights of E3 for me. Um, 
I would say uh, I'm just so stupidly excited to have Halo in my life again. That was such a big part of my life growing up. So I've it, never played. I'm excited I'm to play. I'm so excited to play all the old games with you. And we'll do all the... I honestly think we'll all do all the campaign playthroughs together on stream. I'm excited. Um, and I'm excited for the new Halo as well because they teased that at E3. Um Super excited for Cyberpunk, but don't really know much, honestly, about it. I, I get that there's a ton of hype for it, and it's a cool thing and whatever, but I've seen, like, a couple of trailers, and now I'm just, like, ready to play it. But I have to wait a whole year, so we'll see. Um, the Quarantine, Rainbow Six Quarantine looks cool. It's cool that they have the Siege operators in it. I don't know. Um, I want to try VR at some point. Nothing else for me, three, though. Uh, what's your favorite TikTok. Oh, that one where the guy's just wearing a bear suit and then riding a motorcycle. <laughs> well, first he slides down the stairs in this giant bear suit, and then he's just zooming on a fucking motorcycle. Yeah, that one's good. That one's great. My favorite is the old woman who just goes, ah. <laughs> <laughs> just a big bomb explodes like, in the center of the screen. I like, I unironically like TikTok, but I was telling Julian today, like, TikTok is not like Vine. Like, you go on some of those videos or tiktoks that you think i wonder what the comments look like and they're all so sweet and positive especially with the, the older people who are on tiktok it's being wholesome really yeah. fucking amazing yeah. yeah totally there was that woman talking about her makeup and how she felt pretty that day and it was like oh my god my heart and then you go to the comments they're like you're killing it you look so great and you're just like oh my god faith in humanity yeah. restored. well i also think that the generation right now that has tiktok and loves it like teenage whatever you call that generation gen z whatever they're all like hyper aware of cyberbullying and like they don't fucking think that's cool and they don't do it to each other they don't think that just because i'm on the internet doesn't mean i need to be on an internet with that existing well because they didn't grow up with the and i'm having a hard time saying this word anonymous they weren't anonymous on the online they've always been themselves online do you know what i mean Got Whereas it. a lot of us come from an age on the internet where you can say whatever you want and nobody knows that it's you. Totally, totally. Xbox Live, whatever you want to say, yeah. like terrible, awful shit. Yep. Chat Whereas rooms and whatever. That generation, when you're on the internet, it's always you and you are accountable for the things that you say. Yeah. And they don't do that. I mean, it still exists, obviously. Yeah. But for that app to be that popular with that age group and to see that age group think that that's not fucking cool or acceptable is dope as hell. For sure. For sure. Yeah, I think that's an interesting take. Um, again, my favorite is... Wow. <laughs> so detailed. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu update. Um, not really an update, just still training. Training as much as I can between work and the doggos and everything. I'm just keep on keeping on. I'm still training on a good week three times, on a bad week one time. Sometimes zero times because I have, you know, things to do and we, like, E3 was tough. Couldn't really train during E3. Um, but I got my first stripe on my purple belt a couple weeks ago. Congratulations, Julian. Thank you. It's been, like, ex exactly one year this month uh, that I've had my purple belt. So, it, training's good. I don't know. Not really an update. Plant update. Oh, God. Please don't ask. Okay, we, we can skip I'm that kidding. one. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm totally okay. kidding. Um, most of them have actually been fine, but we went to Hawaii for a week and Chris and Chan were here watching the dogs and I watered all the plants before we left and I made sure that everybody was not thirsty, but I wasn't because they were watching all of our dogs. I didn't want to also be like, could you please just like water this one plant just like this much and like do this? Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Like I said, don't do anything. And then when we got back from Hawaii, we went and picked up Bunny. And, you know, two weeks before then is when we got Bunny. And it was like the plants were already suffering. Most of my plants have done amazing, like, over the span of time that it took me to even, like, mentally be okay with, like, okay, I can go water a plant right now and not feel like I need to make sure all the dogs are. Yeah, totally. I will say m most of them are good, but some of the really small Unfortunately, young ones, the ones that needed to be checked on every couple days and Watered watered more often. constantly. Yeah, yeah. Some of those men have just decided but, I mean, to die. Like for the most part, you go downstairs, you go in our bedroom and you see all the, the array of plants. They all look really They all look they fine. Look good, yeah. yeah. And it was also, it made me feel really happy that so many of them were like, 
It's fine, fam. Yeah. You got a new dog? We're you got to take care of her. We're good for most of them. Yeah. yeah. Some of them were like, I'm going to drop a leaf on the ground and tell you that I'm mad, but I'm still going to stay alive. Some of them were like, pick that shit up, bitch. Some of them were like, I'm dead. <laughs> like a day into it. They were like, goodbye. And then some of the snake plants were, snake plants were like, well, wow, we're chilling. Nothing happened. I don't need, I don't, don't even look at me. I'm fine. I don't yeah. even need that. <laughs> Please don't look at me. Especially in that dining room. Too much room. attention. <laughs> that dining room. Yeah. Like, there's not a lot of light. No. So they don't go through water super fast. Dude, like, they are chilling. Yeah, it is like such a crazy room. Because you walk in there. And it, most of the times it's dark. It's like a dark room. You go in, you turn on the light. You're like, didn't see all this was in here. And they're all just thriving in yeah. the dark. Like, just chilling. It's a very low light plant room. But, you know, when there's less light, they're taking in less water. They're not growing as fast, obviously. But yeah. they're just like, fine for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, where do you find music for your videos? I find music in a couple places. Uh, the first place I started looking was SoundCloud. Um, now it's kind of not so much that just because it's kind of like a dying platform a little bit. Um, I still use you SoundCloud. Think so? I think so. I think they're, I kind of think they're just, they have it wrong. Mm. Uh, I think Spotify is doing a lot of good things. Mm. I actually learned a lot about this talking to Dylan, but it's interesting. Like mm. SoundCloud, they kind of like pivoted what they, you know, the way they were going and a lot of people didn't really like it. So they moved to Spotify because Spotify was fulfilling a need that I understand. SoundCloud wasn't. But anyway, uh, there's one page on SoundCloud I use regularly. It's called Chill Hop. It's a great page. It's run by a guy named Bass. I met him over like video chat a bunny, many years ago. Um, that was when I was working with Bureaucratic, Brandon. So a lot of times I'll find an artist that I like whether I found them on Spotify or elsewhere. Andrew Apple Pie. Andrew Apple Pie is my current favorite. He's awesome. He's, I, his music really just speaks to me. I love making videos to his music. I use him for a lot of LMT and all of my videos kind of recently. Um, yeah, sometimes I'll just, you know, just go through the, the little the platforms that you can sift through and see what you find. And oftentimes, if you're lucky, you'll find a, an artist that you just want to keep working with. I use the suggested music in the YouTube music library. <laughs> True. If it ain't broke, don't smash it. I wish I had more options for classical music because I really do like putting that in the background. I love classical music in your videos. Yeah. It's got a good vibe. Thank you. Who's an unlikely person that's turned out to be a fan of yours? Like a celebrity? Or someone who is, I don't know. I wouldn't say a, fa a fan, but... Or supports you or knows about you. Whatever. Dylan is our friend. <laughs> Dylan is... That was a wild one, yeah. It's funny. <coughs> Dylan Francis is like the nicest, funniest, sweetest person. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you're like, you're Dylan Francis. You're hanging out with like some fucking YouTubers. Like... The low life internet boys with and such girls. low lives. <laughs> Why you like us? He's just a nice person. To be fair, I don't... No, if he knew, maybe he did. When we we met him, that's what I'm saying. I don't think he's a fan. Yeah, an unlikely person who's turned out to be. Well, I think I would say turned out to be a friend, right? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, he's he's one of my good friends. He's a really good guy. Um, I would say though to answer that is Alessia Cara. That kind of blew oh my fucking my mind. Oh my god! When she Love came up her. to us at the award show. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe that. That was wild to me. I, I could was not like, believe that. She's also, so sweet. Yeah, and that was like five years ago. I want to say. And dude, five years ago, and even today, but like especially early on, like you know, people didn't really go up to me. They would go up to Jenna and be like, "Hey, I'm a big fan, love you," and you'll be like, "I love you too," and you like your YouTubers or whatever, and they'll be nice to me. But Alessia came up to me, I know. and she was like, "Hey, Julian, like She's I'm so a fan sweet. of you guys," and was very nice. And I was like, "Shit, did not expect that." She's such a wonderful, wonderful, talented person. We love you, Alessia. We love you, Alessia. Um, did you know Jenna had a big following when you met her? We kind of talked about this. Um, no. No. <laughs> In short, no. <laughs> Not at all. Um, but then I soon learned. Um, she kind of explained to me what everything was. I remember I had a conversation with you where I, you were like, what do you do? I was like, well, I'm in school and I'm doing this and that. And you're like, well, what do you do in school? I'm like, well, I write for the school paper. And you were like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I said that? Yeah, you were like, Why? Do make a YouTube channel like that's now. I was like, hmm, interesting. And then like I didn't, and then I did. Yeah, but I, it was hard to explain. Like I was, hey YouTuber, I work in radio and newspaper. <laughs> like, hello, do you speak my language? No, no, no. I do. But it was um, yeah. Long story short, no, not really. Um, 
That was kind of it. I mean, there was a couple that we missed. Stop turning him. He wants to face us. Hi, sir. You want to go for a little? <laughs> so one of the comments that was like, Julian turns Marvel's bed 180 degrees. Marvel's impossible. <laughs> 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 Funny. Good boy. Um, there was one other question that I skipped. What was your favorite podcast? Oh, man. Without a, without a guest. There's a lot that I like. There's yeah. a lot that like, you know, we just try stuff and, you know, throw ideas to a wall and see what sticks. In hindsight, I really liked our pizza party where all of a sudden we were playing hide and seek. <laughs> that was really, really fun. I really like the you guessing songs. Like, you know, there's really great moments from podcasts that were just like, Let's see if this works. Like, let's mm -hmm. see what this is. Or, yeah. you know, when we're, we're trying to sing songs on a key without hearing them first. Like, I think in its entirety, that podcast is completely obnoxious. Just the like a lot one? of, the, yeah, a lot of them are just terrible Jeez. podcasts. But it's like you get this moment, you know, like the Pizza Party podcast in its entirety probably isn't that fun to listen to. But to watch you stand like a gargoyle on a chair behind me. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's worth it ever. you know yeah for sure i think some of the like unexpected like we're just we're trying to see what if this is a fun idea or not because you know when you come up with ideas for something the only way to see if it'll work is to just do it yeah totally and like so, honestly sometimes we try stuff and we're like damn that, that sucked that good. yeah uh the first snake oil was a surprisingly fun one because mm -hmm. i don't think we expected it to be that good yeah and then i was like Candy belt were cops, <laughs> right? That was snake oil. Or the segue off. The segue off was pretty great. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the early, early ones that we. Oh, the the one where we went through the DSM with Brett. I don't even remember that. We were in the dining room at our old house. Um, like one of us was out of focus. We, I think oh, we were. God. I, I think it was all three of us sitting mm. there, and then. But that's with a guest. That is with a guest. That's true. You cheated. Billy Ray, uh, Sarah Palin. Oh, my God. Why Can did you we do we that? Did that? I know. We so did it because know. people asked for it, and then it was terrible. Oh, it's the worst thing ever. That That's was my funny. least favorite. <laughs> um, yeah. There's, like you said, there's been a lot of unexpected good ones. Yeah. The first trivia where you discovered my inability to oh my God. distinguish celebrities. That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a good time. This has been a good time. I don't know what episode we're on. Over like 220 or 30. What number is this? Look below and tell me. What's insane to me is that we've had guests on here and we just smush them in between smush us. Smush them. High five over them. It's kick them out when we're done. just like the worst podcast to be on because you're just like, Ugh, I have to look over here and then over here and I'm just in the middle and I feel so weird. I mean, I've thought about it. Like we have, I mean, we technically we could make it like, Oh, we have a camera angle on you, a camera angle on me, a camera angle on the guest, a wide camera. Like make people comfortable. You mean? Yeah, like ba like Maybe make it sit not across make from it each not other a round and speak table. to each other. Make it not a weird date where you're sitting on the same <laughs> side of the booth as your friend. That's what this podcast is. Mm -hmm. We're on a date at a restaurant as friends, and we're there's like a table of four, and we're both taking up the two seats, and there's no one at those two seats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're having conversations with our imaginary friends who are in those two seats. Mm -hmm. We get kicked out of the restaurant, expelled. Oh no. Then we got welcome back. Then we're back in the restaurant. But yeah, I don't know. I don't, I kind of think it's just like, if it ain't terribly broken, don't fix it. If it's a little broken, just shut up. Just put some dirt on it, put some ramen on it and paint over it. Yeah, be on our podcast at your own risk, anyways. You know. Yeah. We, yeah. Do we make people sign that? We should make people yeah, sign that. Yeah, we it. should make people sign that. If anything happens to you, to your well being, physical or otherwise, it's not our fault. Oh my god! Is that it for questions? I think that's it. Cool. Thanks for your questions, y'all. I think my favorite question was the yeet. Definitely yeet. Yeet, yeeted, mm -hmm. or yoat? Yeet, yeeted, yeeted. I yeeted these. I yeeted those sponsor segues at you. Yeeted. Okay. Yeeted. Kermit's ready. Kermit's ready to go eat some more of your hair. Yeah, you want to eat some hair, bud? Thank you guys for hanging out for another podcast. It was fun. This was fun. We haven't done a Q&A in a long time. Thank you 
Oh. There, there she is. There's Bunny. Right on time. A, we haven't done a Q&A in a long time. Thank you to Marissa for compiling the questions. Thank you, you guys for sending in the questions. Uh, and we'll be uh, we'll be back next week and see you live on stream. Thanks for hanging. Bye, y'all. Bye.